more productivity tools from people that really use them. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac Voices or text Mac Voices to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is part two in a three-part Mac Voices Live discussion about productivity tools and the ones that our panel really actually uses themselves. And as I said at the end of part one, there was so much discussion and so many great tools that we ended up going long and having a, a lengthy discussion. We're breaking it down into three parts so that you get a chance to hear about everything and the discussion about why each tool is so useful to the individual who picked it. So we're going to get right into part two, and I hope you get something that you can use too. Mr. Guy Searle, um, yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not making any suggestions. I'm just pointing out that so far, everybody's been talking about software. Are you a software productivity guy, or is there, is there something hardware-oriented in your, uh, in your bag? Well, um, let's start with hardware and see where we go from there. Uh, my favorite all-time microphone up to this point has been my my precious Heil PR40 here. I keep using this over and over again, even though I have tons of others. Uh, as far as an audio interface, I'm a huge fan of the Behringer UMC series. You can get that in one, two, or four XLR inputs. The preamps in them are really, really good. And... Um, from there, everything gets pumped into my favorite DAW, which is Hindenburg Journalist Pro. And the nice thing about the Behringer unit is it allows me to do up to four separate audio tracks through the interface right into it, right into Hindenburg. So everything I've plugged into it will be on its own track, which is great when you're talking about audio. Uh, once that's done... Uh, as far as video goes, I typically use DaVinci uh, Resolve for all of my video. And once the video is done, I extract the audio from that with a program that you can find in the Mac App Store called Audio Converter Pro. And that will output it as pretty much whatever type of audio file, audio file that you want. And that's, you know, those are, those are some of the tools that I use. I, oh, I also use uh, Camo. Because I have a uh, an older uh, iPod Touch that I'm actually using as a webcam, and I use Camo to connect that through to the computer, and it's another great tool. Okay, interesting. I figured that hardware would would uh, come up in your list somewhere. Yeah. Um, we we love to see Cloudlifter, Cloudlifter, and um, Triton Fithead for uh, inline preamps for microphones. Adds 25 dB of nice, clean gain. Okay, great, great. Mr. Petrie, so now we have uh, the hardware barrier broken. Uh, are you going hardware or software? Uh, I'm going to go software. Um, I, at one point years ago, well, you know, I, I write software reviews and hardware reviews, but uh, several years ago, I spent several months in a rehab but I was still running for screencast online and using Ulysses on my iPod, uh, my iPhone, I was able to gather all the graphics, write the whole article, publish it and send it off to uh, Don over in England. Never missed a beat. If I wanted to put something on my side, I was able to just send it through Ulysses to WordPress, put it right up. So I have I have an affinity for that as people have for bare bones. So for the folks who are who are uninitiated, Frank, what makes Ulysses so so much better than another? I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's <laughs> you know how sometimes. Well, yeah, there's twenty thousand text apps. You know, how sometimes you just some about it's like it's like being with people. Uh, you find an app and you like the way it looks, you like the way it behaves, and you're just in tune with it naturally. And for some reason, it, it my logic, what little of it there is, happens to mesh well with the way Ulysses is, is laid out. 
So I, I keep like I, everything on there. I keep uh, journals, video ideas, uh, stuff I write for other uh, podcasts and stuff like that. For some reason, it just clicks. And I'm, it, I like the way it organizes. It's, it's very, very basic. But then again, so am I. Hmm. Okay. Ulysses, Ulysses is a great tool. I, that would be a good pick for me. I use that quite a bit. And I don't know, did, Frank, did you mention that it's all based on Markdown? Uh, I haven't used the Markdown that much lately. We were using that on SEO for a while, but they re-automated the production of the magazine. So we sort of, they sort of messed around with Markdown. They came up almost like, you could almost call it SEO down, a strange variation of it. But yeah, I forgot about that. You're, you're right. The Markdown on it was great. Yeah, in fact, really I, cool. I like using it with WordPress. Although the one thing I don't like is WordPress now uses a Divi Builder. So you can use either the classic editor or the block editor. And right now, Ulysses will not talk to the block editor. It will only talk to the classic editor. So if I shift an uh, article or a review over to it, it just totally destroys the layout. And I have to go in and spend about an hour and a half redoing everything. Uh, I'm sure that would get but addressed. I mean, the whole Gutenberg thing is still new. and Yeah. Uh, uh, but that's not the point. I, Frank, I I love Ulysses as well. Uh, it's been a go-to for me for writing on the go for a long time because I can write on my iPad. And when I get back to my desk, whatever I wrote on my iPad is there on my Mac, organized in whatever folders I want it in. I don't care about Markdown because uh, Markdown to me just doesn't seem valuable because I already know HTML. Why should I learn another uh, markup language? Uh, but being able to do all the syncing and uh, and have all my text documents uh, on all my devices all the time is really nice. And that said, when I'm at my Mac, I do all my writing in BB Edit. But, you know, U Ulysses is my on-the-go writing tool. You make great a great point there because I... Um... I end up using, I, I didn't even think of that. I do use all three devices, my iPad, the uh, iMac, and the iPhone. And it's not unusual for me to be uh, laying in bed just about to doze off, and there'll be a review I'm doing. And all of a sudden, I'll think of a, two or three sentences that I go, oh, that's perfect. I got to put that in there. And I'll reach over on the nightstand, open up Ulysses on the phone, put it in there, boom, he's everywhere the next day. Mm-hmm. For me, Ulysses is the only, really the only productivity tool I use on my iPad. Everything else I do on the iPad is consumption, pretty much. But Ulysses, yeah, and and yeah, the way it syncs is, you know, between devices is great. It's so cool to be able to, you know, start something on the iPad and then do some on the Mac and then go back sometimes on the phone, not too much. But, um, and for me, the markdown part is really really cool. Uh, it's really nicely integrated. And I, I I use Markdown extensively. Actually, all the Panorama's documentation was written in Markdown. I agree, disagree with you a little bit, Jeff, because I, I obviously I know HTML really well, but HTML is clunky. It's, you know, a lot of weird characters to type. And and Markdown makes it so much easier for, for a lot of tasks, you know, if you don't need a specialized tag. So when I have to go back, I'm using something that doesn't allow Markdown. I'm like, uh, uh, I can't can't do it this way. Well, um, the thing is, the neat thing is Ulysses also has pull down menus with all the Markdown. So you don't have to learn any of it. You just say, I want header one, header three, header five. You know what size it is. I want to put an image here. I want to put a link here. You no, just the nice thing about Markdown is there's not much, to, not much to learn. Um, and, and Ulysses is, 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 is real automatable, too. In fact, I actually, I, you know, I, when I found out about it, I liked it so much. I actually wrote a bunch of Panorama documentation. I Instead of writing it in BB Edit or something like that, I started writing in Ulysses, and I made scripts so that I could transfer it straight into Panorama. Uh, so it was it was it was awesome. Question, Frank? We, we, oh, go go, Mark. Sorry. So for the syncing, what's it used for the back end? Is it iCloud or Dropbox or no? It has its own it has its own proprietary system. 
from point to point or is it through their server? As far as I understand, it's through their servers. Is that right, Jeff? Um, I believe That's it a good is. Question. I, I thought, thought it was. I, through, I think it's through iCloud, iCloud, isn't it? No, I know yeah, one I password. I could do through iCloud. Are you sure? Uh, hold on. Let's just fire up Ulysses. <laughs> and take I think a look. they have their own thing. I I thought it was through iCloud. I think so. And another nice thing about Ulysses, it's part of Setup. Yes, yes, and Setup is doing iOS now as well. So if you got Ulysses, <laughs> yeah, proper, actually, that's you also a got iOS. Thing. But they had that before. You know, Ulysses was the one thing that was on set out before they did that, and now it actually costs more. You have to you have to pay extra to do it on iOS, so that that kind of sucks. So uh, while you, yeah, Jeff, oh, no, go, go ahead, Chuck. I, well, I, I just uh, yeah, it says is, iCloud. I'll shut up. Yeah, no, no, the, no. I, I want I want to get the answer out, but um, I don't know enough about Ulysses. I have not used it. Does it, and I don't want to go too far down this rat hole, Frank, but um, does it export, uh, does it export HTML? I mean, is that, because you know, that's the, I've that's never a, tried, yes. but I would imagine it does. Yeah, it exports okay. a lot of. Uh, and also yeah. PDF. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what I was thinking for Frank's situation is if he, if he were to switch into the classic editor, he could paste in the HTML and that would solve that issue for him. Yeah, but WordPress did some strange things in the last few months with a thing called block editing through Divi Builder, which yeah. breaks a lot of things. Well, so, Divi Builder is different from yeah, the block editor. So, uh, well, they they refer to it themselves as a block editor. When I go to that page, yeah, it says so Divi Builder, feeling, and then it says we're a block editor. I, I have a feeling your problem, net. As, as I've been processing this in my head, is not a WordPress Gutenberg issue. It's a Divi issue. And Divi is, yeah, a, is a that framework would make sense. A theme yeah. that you put yes. on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So oh. the Ulysses feature page shows various file formats. So you can export as text, HTML, EPUB, PDF, or DOCX. Uh, you can add external folders if you have plain text folders in Dropbox. Uh, Ulysses will process them and it uses full iCloud sync. So if you're just using, if you just want to sync your files, uh, that uses iCloud in order to work. And then it also has an option for backups, like time ah, machine style right. backups, like locally on your Mac. It looks like a Mac uh, dialog yeah, thank box you. that you use there. So. And also don't thank forget you. Divi. Divi is a theme. It's a theme yep. for WordPress. So, I mean, that's part of the editing part of of, of WordPress, WordPress site. Um, so they're just well. They had the thing I know in Ulysses that I used to be able to go to preview on my article and sign into my uh, WordPress account previously, hit a button, and in Classic Editor it laid it out exactly in Markdown the way I had it. It it won't do it if it. Happens to, if for whatever reason I haven't found a way to switch it, it wants to, to default to Divi when it gets in there. So mm. yeah, that's part of that's part of the theme. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a yeah. Divi fan. I, I know we're not doing a word uh, yeah. a WordPress show, but uh, boy, <laughs> I could turn it into one real fast. It <laughs> like. yeah. feels like one. Well, You'd have we'll, help. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe maybe we'll have to do a WordPress show. That's a good idea. There you go. Hey, Kelly, you're up next, but before you do, I want to uh, invite the chat room folks um, to throw in their ideas for some of their favorite productivity apps. If we haven't mentioned yours, or if you haven't, you just want to pile on, by all means, please do. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac Voices or text Mac Voices to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. What are you listening to? Besides Mac Voices, of course. If you were smart, you were listening to audiobooks from Audible. Because listening to audiobooks can not only entertain, but can also make you smarter. Self-improvement, history, technology, science, and business are just some of the categories that you can select from that will improve your knowledge and perspective. I just finished up listening to The Attention Merchants by Tim Wu. If you think the issues surrounding social media and consumer information gathering are new, this book gives you both historical perspective and details of the more current developments in this area. That's just one of the books in my already large Audible library and my even larger Audible wish list. 
That list is drawn not only from the items I've selected, but also from their Plus catalog that includes thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks, and podcasts. All that is included with your membership, so you never need to wonder if there's something else you want to listen to. There is always something else you will want to listen to, and Audible is adding more titles all the time. You should get in on this too, and that's why you should visit audible.com slash macvoices, or text macvoices to 500-500 right now to start your 30-day free trial. That's audible.com slash macvoices, or text macvoices, the word macvoices, to 500-500. Again, the text is the word Mac Voices, and the number is 500-500. Audible.com slash Mac Voices for your next great listen. Thanks to Audible for their support of Mac Voices. Kelly, what do you what do you got? Because you do a, a diverse bunch of things. <laughs> I do. Um, I'm gonna treat this the way we normally do. Like um, over at the Incomparable, we will do episodes that are called drafts. So if somebody picks something, then you can't pick it too. So some of the things that I've already had, like uh, text expander, is something I rely on basically all day, every day. Um, a microphone because I do a podcast every weekday. So I have a blue encore is what this microphone is. Um, there's a lot of others, like a, you know, something similar to what everybody has picked so far. So um, I'm gonna see Guy's hardware pick, and I'm gonna raise him mm-hmm. an analog pick <laughs> of my notebook. Which doesn't show up very well because I'm using the Millennium Falcon background. But here's my notebook. Uh, This is a disc-bound notebook, as we talked about before. Um, uh, When you had Mike Schmitz on and he was like, yeah, I tore everything up and like started over with productivity. And I was like, wait, 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 I need to ask you a bunch of questions about your notebook now. So this one here is a full-size notebook, uh, like eight and a half by 11 paper. And you can get one of these for uh, like $10 at um, Staples. I think Office Depot has something similar because the secret is the disc bound. So it's these little plastic discs and you can pull things out and put things back in and they make all kinds of pages for them. So you can get dated pages if you want a planner. They have to-do list pages. They have um, uh, just lined paper so that you can do that sort of thing. Graph paper if that's, you know, if you're looking to lay something out. And uh, not only do they come in great big sizes, but they come in very small sizes too. So I have a separate one that I use for totally other things. So um, plus it gives you another uh, surface for stickers, which is always nice to have, you know. Is that sea monkeys stickers. on top of there? No. No. I know that's the Incomprobot, which ah. will show up now. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, like, I mean, it, if I have an opportunity, there's going to be a Doctor Who sticker involved. So um, this is what I would say is a thing that helps me for a bunch of reasons. Number one, I type way faster than I can write anything legibly with a pen. So, and yes, it's a Hello Kitty pen. Um, unless it's a Star Wars pen, I have I have several pens. Um, but the, the thing about it is that... Um, uh, it, sl- it it forces me to slow down when I'm writing something. I have to stop and think about it. It also helps sort of etch it into my brain as a thing that I'm doing uh, because physically the act of writing it sort of enforces it better than just the typing does. So like if I'm sitting in a meeting and need to take notes of what somebody's saying very quickly and I need to make sure I have a good record of that to refer to later, then I will absolutely type. But if I'm sitting down to like lay out what's going to happen in my day, that sort of thing, uh, I'm going to do it on paper or if I'm taking my own notes uh, from like something that I'm learning, then I will write those things down because it helps me. It helps me slow down. It helps me focus on what I'm writing. It helps me make sure I'm writing uh, the parts I actually need to write down. And I will sometimes, um, you know, take some quick notes and then go back and fill those things in later, or it'll be the start of something that ends up being something that I do type into my computer, but like the beginning of a whole lot of stuff that I do and that I work on and that I keep track of starts in one of these. So that would be my, that would be my pick. That's, that's interesting, Kelly. I know that, um, we've talked a lot about analog versus digital, Mm-hmm. And the fact that that you know that that 
interview with Mike, I know he he got me started in that direction too. And I have found I'm glad. some definite. Yeah, I, I am too, because I found some definite advantages. I There's so many things I, I love, so many apps, and I especially like um, notes for, you know, sort of what they were, mm-hmm. what the guys were talking about um, uh, Ulysses doing, you know, mm-hmm. sinking back and forth. But there's still something, I, unfortunately, when you're on the phone, even though I, I can touch type, it still is, you got to look away, call up the right document or the right mm. app. And you, but, but, you know, we all know since we were kids, you know how to reach over, grab a pen. And even if you're just scribbling a note down completely mm-hmm. raw and free form, you can do it with, without anybody really paying attention. So good choices. Good choices. Mr. Ginsburg, you yes. ended up uh, last here. So I'm going to, I'm going to let you um, run with it. What do you got? Well, um, so, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of us are podcasters here, so I was kind of going to give you a little bit of a mix of hardware and, and, and software. Um, my trusty Rodecaster Pro right next to me here is probably one of my go-to devices that I've been using since been doing a podcast here. I absolutely love it. It makes me feel very productive when I'm doing my, my shows. Um, gives banks here where I can uh, put pre, pre-recorded uh, uh, episode of stuff that goes into the episode. Uh, it gives me a lot of good granular control and then matches it nicely with my Rode pod mic. So Rode, Rode makes some really good stuff. And I threw a cloud lifter in there too. This guy had to mention his cloud lifter. So, um, so, <laughs> so, so, so I, uh, and of course, guy influenced me a little bit on, on the mic, the mic and uh, setting choices. So, but the, the Rodecaster Pro has been has been my go-to device uh, for uh, for quite some time in the podcasting. It's uh, and it's been making me sound really good too. So, uh, you guys met, mentioned Setup. I absolutely love Setup. I mean, I, I don't know how I can live without Setup at this point because there's just so many great choices of apps that are that are available in Setup these days. Uh, a couple of them that stand out for me is you know monitoring all the news that I because I you know, with my podcast I'm talking a lot about news stories for specifically Apple. News Explorer is my favorite one of my favorite apps. To, to for RSS feeds and the, I mean I even got the the Mac Voices uh, Flipboard page in, in in that feed so I can watch any stuff that you're posting so um, and then uh, two other ones that'll stand out uh, I use a short menu because do I like to do a lot of copying of of URLs uh, and, and it does that, that shortens them very quickly and easily um, which uh, which um, uh, makes it uh, a lot easier for me and then uh, they also have another app called Text Sniper that allows you to copy anything that's in a graphic format and turn it into text. So those stand out. And then finally, I'll just talk a little bit. I mean, I've been using this app forever and then people probably, probably think I'm a little crazy, but I don't, I don't think I'm not, but TechSmith, big company that makes Snagit. Snagit, I think makes a great, uh, 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 screen capture program. I've been using it for years and years on both the PC side and the, and the, and the, and the Mac side, and they've gotten a lot better on the Mac side. Uh, I pay, pay a yearly license on it. I, I think probably of, of all of the, the screen capturing programs out there, I find it to be the, the most robust, giving me a lot of flexibility and being able to copy paste things and put things in places that I do all the time. So, uh, and uh, those really stand out. One more um, honorable mention too is I, I do from time to time download uh, YouTube videos and, uh, and, and audio when I, whenever needed. There's a, another great app called made by Softarino, the YouTube computer, uh, YouTube converter app, uh, which which is just a fabulous app. It's it's got a nice interface, makes it real easy whenever you need something in a pinch, uh, uh, whether it be just a video or, or audio. It converts it not not only in video, but audio as well. So that's a lot of my tool bag. What I do uh, to be productive for what I do. David, um, tell me about Snagit a little bit. I, I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued. I've tried a couple uh, screen capture utilities, and I've find I, I don't know whether I'm just not doing things right or what but it seems like my screen capture my screen capture needs can be completely addressed by what Apple gives me sure and I'm probably being naive about that but I just find that you know I, I don't find need for some of those they they end up kind of getting in my way um, and that's not putting them down it's just that for me it didn't work what works for you so much better with snagit um, 
I, I really like the way the, the, the themes that you can set, uh, the way you can control it. It's granular. I mean, and you've got the quick shortcuts in the case of the Mac. You do con, you, you do command shift C, puts it in the copy mode. Um, I, I like the, where the, the hair, the, the, the hair, hair pins are giving you places where it, it can copy. If you want to get a scrolled web page, it's got all those all built into it. The call outs, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, Apple Apple's built in, has a lot of call out stuff, but you can get even more creative with this. And it, and it really has its own interface in itself with the way it saves a lot of the screen captures and being able to uh, put squares around them, put arrows around them. And I know there's so many of them out there. I, I don't know. I just, I've, I just been partial to snag it for many, many years. And, uh, and I've, as, as I said, I've got the, a, a reasonable priced license for it. So that, that also helps too. So, but the, I, I, I think really what stands out is just it, it's it's a little more robust in the way it does the screen captioning versus some of the other tools that uh, that are out there. But it also will do screen recording, screen like recording quickly as well, and right? easily, like really, like a small lightweight. Like every time I do this thing, it crashes. Uh, you can make that like very clear, and it's not mm -hmm. a huge pain to set it up. It's not a huge pain to try and do it. It's not a huge pain to do anything with the file afterwards. So what, that is one of the nice things about Snagit, is particularly when it comes to screen recording. Yeah, I, um, I that's forgot what, to mention that's that. What's nice about it. And I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Kelly. Is uh, because of course they they also have a companion product called Camtasia, which is their their video similar to what ScreenFlow does, but it's really expensive. And and, and for a lot of the needs of most people that that need video capture and and the combination of video capture and screen capture, I mean Snagit is is just fine. I mean, and it's not that terribly expensive. Even if you buy one a one time license, thirty, forty, forty dollars is about all it costs to do it. I, I, I'm on a an annual plan. I'm only paying like thirteen dollars a year. For it, for, for, and I can have it on, a, on you know, multiple machines. I have it on a PC and on a Mac. So, uh, and uh, I just I just find it to be a, a much more robust way of, of of doing a lot of screen capturing more than more than most. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, I want to save mine for just a minute um, because I want to go to the chat room. Brian in the chat room said that he's using, I think, what was his phrase? The low-key version of Text Expander built into Mac OS. <laughs> um, and and that's that's great. It's a great way to get started with it. Um, but I, I, as I responded in the text, you know, going from that to Text Expander is like going from a Ford to a Ferrari. It's just there's so much more you can do with Text Expander. Um, let's see. He also loved Rocketbook. David, didn't? Do, am I wrong? Didn't you have a rocket book or yeah. Kelly? I did. Yeah. Yeah. David taunted me with one, I think is, is how that went. Back here somewhere. <laughs> like, look what you, look what you could be doing instead of, you know, using, using paper like a chump. Um, there, there it is. I have it. <laughs> yeah. It, okay. it looks super nifty. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so that was one of Brian's picks. Um, Paul, and this, this is really interesting. This just shows you how diverse things can get. He said, YouTube for education how mm -hmm. to do something. Yeah. And you know, he's right. I mean, you know, you need to, yep. you need to change the, the filter in your refrigerator. You can find somebody that's made a YouTube video out of oh. it. Yep. Everything's on YouTube. Not a very interesting <laughs> video, but you know, it's yeah, there. But if you need it, you need it. Yeah. You know. What you're doing well, is inherently not very interesting when you're trying to replace the water filter in your fridge. So, yeah. Like those kind of things are helpful or things that maybe you don't know. It, it, well, it depends like, on how you do it. When I change a water filter in my refrigerator, it gets very exciting. Okay, that may be true, Florida man, but for the rest of the world... I didn't say I did it correctly. From For the rest of the world... Uh, like there's there's a lot of other stuff that that you can learn or um or or like refer to how to do something so i've done a load of projects around my house that uh because i was able to find it on youtube like oh it's really not that complicated to replace the screen in the frame that i have for this window it's really not that complicated to replace the faucet in the bathroom sink with uh, you know, replace the one I hate with one I like better. And so if I sit down and watch some videos and get an idea of like what I'm in for, I can tell, is it, you know, is this like, do I need to call in backup on this? Or like, is this a thing I can handle on my own? And so like being able to have some idea what I'm in for before I start is also really nice. Like I use, I use a lot of YouTube video for boring how-to stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I and mostly so kind of use it to make sure that I actually don't do something yeah, that's what, what I'm you, looking for is this thing that it looks right. like you're supposed to unscrew, don't unscrew it, you know. Okay. <laughs> that's that's yes. helpful because I'm the person that will do that. 
So yeah. Yeah, but the tr- trouble is usually I've already happens. unscrewed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um Jerry in the chat room said, mine is keeper password manager. Um, he says, I have a lot of passwords that I have to manage for my clients. Yeah. I, from a from a productivity and a security standpoint, good job. My product, yeah. I, you know, Plus I one password managers. Yep. I, I use I use one password, but it, yep. any way you take it, a password manager is better than a uh, no a, password a manager. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and and a password protected document. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, or the the XYZ section of your address book. Um yeah, that's good. <laughs> don't 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 give me anybody ideas, Kelly. That's not I good. I don't enough. have to. That those are ideas people have already had, Chuck. Yes. Um, okay. The like plus one, like in broad strokes, there's a lot of other stuff I use that like I was sort of like picking one one thing in particular with notebooks, but um I use text expander loads. I use text edit all the live long day. Uh, both on my personal computer and on my work machine. And part of the reason I love text edit the way I love it is because it's bare bones. It's not, it's not fancy in any way. It's not trying to get in my way. It's not trying to help me write a business letter. It's not trying to help me anything. Like you have a blob of text you need to hold on to. I got that for you. I'll have it here when you get back. The end. Um, I use drafts for quick hits constantly um if i'm not writing it down with a pen in one of the notebooks over here uh i am probably putting it in drafts in one way or another uh if it's something that just came to me like i can i can do it on my phone i can do it from my watch i can do it from my computer like whatever apple screen i have in front of me literally any of them uh i can use drafts and make sure that when i'm at the other machine where i at the other apple screen where i need to do the thing that i wrote down in drafts there it is um you know i open drafts and measure stuff like i take measurements for things because i have to you know because i watched a video on youtube and got a bunch of ideas and now i have to go to home depot so i will go measure a bunch of things and those measurements live in drafts where i can get to them very easily um you know, later I will sit down and part that stuff out. Like I have a, I have a data store where all the house stuff goes. Like every time I have to measure something, I have a data store where like work project stuff sort of goes where I have, you know, the, the archive of stuff I've come across there. So there's a lot like the um, password managers are really good for that kind of stuff. You don't have to remember credit cards or um, do anything with, with, you know, secure notes. You can lock all that stuff away. You can share password managers. A lot of them have some sort of sharing capability. So if there are other people you need to share passwords with, whether it's for utilities or um, uh, like, you know, we're all coworkers and have to access the same five passwords for all our clients or whatever, you can do those things. Um, a microphone is good. If you are still uh, living in the land of, uh, I put in an eight hour work day and six of them are on Zoom. Uh, go drop $20 on a ring light and a stand and everyone you work with on those calls will thank you. Um, there, like there's a lot of like really small things that can make a material difference in, in a lot of people's day, you know, like get a good pen. If you haven't yet get a comfy chair, you know, that you can stand to sit in for a long time and things like that, like things like that will make a huge, huge difference in trying to get things done in what may not be your normal setup. That wraps up part two in our three-part Mac Voices Live discussion of productivity tools. The third and final part is coming up, and you're definitely going to want to pay attention because there's some really unusual tools, frankly, some things I never even heard of, that are in use by some of our panel members. They tell you why, what they can do, and what they can do for you. So join us next time to wrap up this discussion of productivity tools on Mac Voices. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.